because he, he's he's kind of really doing like, this right oh yeah i'm curious Zuckerberg is much smaller he, he's i think he's what five seven okay oh he might get mauled <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to uh, another Tech Talk. Uh, with me, as always, Mr. Ryan Epps and Mr. Christian Tejeres. Hey, guys. And, uh, yeah, we're here to bring you three or four good topics that's been, you know, in the news this week and give you our regular Joe perspective. So, Christian, what we what's, what's first on the docket, my man? Okay. Our first topic for today. Call of Duty streamer Timothy Tim the Tatman Better is requesting for the removal of his in-game skin over Nicholas Nick Merckx Kolchev's anti-LGBTQ controversy. Better said he didn't want to bundle to remain after his friend and fellow streamer had his in-game skin stripped from the games over his recent anti-LGBTQ remarks. Ryan, do you see this in any way as a reverse Bud Light scenario where a boycott wouldn't amount to much? Yeah, I mean, clearly, right? I mean, the boycott really hasn't done much per se other than really kind of generate buzz. Uh, it's not like it's slowed down Call of Duty at all. People are still buying COD. Uh, season 4 just dropped, so it's pretty, still pretty big, pretty popular. Uh, it's It was losing steam. Call of Duty was losing steam, but I feel like the controversy kind of just, it highlighted the fact that Call of Duty is just unstoppable, right? I mean, <clears throat> Next to Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty is one of the biggest gaming IP. It is the biggest gaming IP on the face of the earth. So it's hard to boycott something that 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 has such lasting you know power. Um, and I think I don't know. I think where, where, where was the boycott poignant? Was the boycott like there? Like like it was it, it generated buzz, but I don't think it really did much other than kind of prove the fact that Call of Duty is like unstoppable. <laughs> The unstoppable force, right? All right. Well, I mean, I think. What do you guys think? Like, maybe this is we're we're getting to a point with this <clears throat> LGBTQ backlash thing to where maybe people are just like over it. Yeah, like I get it why you're upset, but it's not going to affect my daily life. Whereas before, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, it's all brand new. Let's jump on and let's boycott this this company or this product, whereas now it's just like, oh, here we go again, but it's, I really enjoy this thing. It's the internet, right? I mean, it's the internet. Mm. It's where, where things go to, like, get blown up out of proportion. Um, it's all started essentially with Nick Merckx um, saying, disagreeing with Call of Duty. Call of Duty had said that they, you know, would promote essentially because um, the month of June is, what is it, uh, Pride Month, essentially. Mm. So Call of Duty said that they would promote essentially, you know, educational talks about sexuality and stuff like that in schools. <clears throat> and Nick Merckson take that too kindly. Um, as do, you know, a lot of people don't think that's fair, right? I mean, right. Um, so yeah, it's 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 one of those interesting controversies where clearly there's a lot of um tension around this stuff. There's a lot of tension and the internet only makes it worse, far worse, right? <laughs> Because there's so many different views, so many different uh, ideas, and no one really knows how to how best to kind of stick with that, how best to say how they feel. Instead, they just kind of jump and they lash out. Mm. Uh, that's the problem with the internet. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's constant infighting. Well, I mean, what even? Uh, and to, I feel like nowadays, like what? I feel like the the definition of hate has been, or not even hate, but let's say anti, has yeah. been blurred right like just yeah. because you don't agree with something that doesn't necessarily make you anti that thing absolutely absolutely right. i agree yeah you know just to say oh i don't think this is a good idea oh you're anti you must be this and you must be it's like gee no i just i it's a it's my opinion like today we're not even entitled to an opinion it's like fall yeah. in line or 
you get know. with the times, right? Yeah. Get with the times. Uh, yeah, it's like, I guess it's, it it's is, the, is um, obviously the, the you're either with us or you're against us mentality. Yeah. You That's can't the prevalence of uh, cancel culture is definitely, uh, has definitely made this like far worse. You just can't have mm. a single thought anymore. Right. You have to be with the sheep or you're not, you know, and I, yep. individuality is just out the door now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, what what can you do, though, right? I mean, other than kind right. of just say your piece and move on, which Nick did. Nick said his piece. Call of Duty took his skin out and whatever. Like, it's like yeah. another day. <laughs> yeah. um, and it just sparked this whole controversy. It's just, uh, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, Elon Musk crazy. Gave, gave a good example of this in his previous interview, the controversial one. It's not even that controversial. It just so happened that it went viral, but his question was, what was your definition of hate speech and could you point it mm. to me? Like, every one of us has a different opinion of every statement that exactly. we actually read. I might read exactly. one thing and you guys might not agree on the context that I understood it. Yeah. So if we begin classifying every kind of speech in the thing that, hey, you said this, it's against me, not everyone can actually see it that way. Mm. So... What they're doing right now is they're actually putting a wall because the internet was supposed to make opinions open, not necessarily close. But the thing is, they yeah. forgot that the internet also opens a, a gateway to conversation. Like, this yeah. isn't a period thing. Like, when he said that, leave kids alone. Like, it's not just him that's thinking this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. Now, you know, it's one of the, again, it's one of those weird things. It's like, um, you don't want to directly influence how they think, how they feel. Right. Um, right. but they should know, I guess, like where they should know, like what, what is, what is gay or like, what is being gay? What does that mean? Mm. So it's, it's, um, yeah, like sexual education is very important, but at the same time, you don't want to influence how they feel later on in life. Um, right. and yeah, I, it's just like, yeah, it's, <laughs> how do you how do you approach especially in the internet like we live in today where everything is so so uh almost militarized right every topic is just super militarized you can't say anything on twitter anymore without getting just absolutely destroyed by you know the masses as it were mm -hmm. yeah yeah the one thing about this is it's kind of funny to me that this actually bled into the gaming community i think if you, you look back 20 years ago the gaming community was completely divorced from politics, although it it actually has brushes before with any political ideologies because of certain tie-ins with possible reasons for violence, but not yeah. to the point that it's being used for identity politics. Like this is it's, the first time that uh... this community is actually could this be because of Twitter? Like it's the Twitter lynch. It's a lot of different things. It's basically. all it's also uh the changing of culture, right? Um Last mm. five years, I've noticed since like 20, yeah, about 2017, 2018, it started to kind of evolve. And, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these gamers that were, uh, you know, love games and stuff, male often, um, changed, you know, their sexual identity. Um, I used to write at a place called The Gamer. And um, a lot of the, a lot of the writers there were, you know, either gay or just, um trans whatever it be transsexual so it's clear that the gaming community is made up of a lot of different sexual identities as it were right um and it's it's grown into that it's like took a, took a long time and as you said you mentioned this earlier christian that uh they were gamers were known as like losers or not losers but loners essentially right mm. now it's evolved into the cultural it's like guys like like gaming is now a part of almost everybody's you know pastime most people game nowadays and it's like become far more popular and now you're seeing a wider audience wider net of ideas and uh that's how this stuff has now become more even prevalent in in, in even journalism right when it comes to gaming and stuff that's why a lot of the gamers on internet uh, aren't really pleased about some of the writing like look at kotaku kotaku just gets absolutely destroyed most of the time because some of the articles are just uh, jokes <laughs> they're like actual jokes like you read the headline you're just like what like who decided to write that you know but 
a lot of these, a lot of these, at least for the gaming media side, a lot of them think that they're they have this cause, they have a cause that they need to get across. And it's not really. It's just we're, we're just playing games. We're just we're trying to have fun, you know. For for right. most of us, maybe not all of us, right? I don't know. Right. I think it's uh, some some people they think there's there. Don't get me wrong. There absolutely should be should have. It's 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 great if you have a cause or something like that. But for the most of us, mm. we just want to play games and have fun. It's right. Video games, like you know. Well, yeah. I mean, I I agree with you, man. That you know, if if you have a cause, <clears throat> and you're passionate about your cause you know that's fine but uh you know when all right i mean you can even go as far as to say like these this guy getting his skin pulled or whatever um i mean is that not that's that's there's a term i want to use and i'm not sure how accurate it is but it's like financial violence right like just because you know what's different than stoning this man in the town square then uh, violently attacking his finances, his reputation. Like, at what point does your cause an image, right? His, his image, right? Too. Yeah, when? Yeah, and his image. Yeah, like when? When can your cause be so important that you can actually destroy someone else's well-being? I mean, back to your point, you said earlier, like, where's comments really that anti-LGBT? You know, where, where's comments really even? Um, meant to stir the pot like no like mm. he was literally saying a fact like stay away from the kids and and that's his ideal like that's what he believes and that's and a good one started to dog pilot yeah absolutely yeah people just started to dog pilot and you're you're right i mean it's not like listen it's not like nick Merck is gonna be hurting from him losing his skin and cotton right like right. it's not really gonna affect his financial um staying power whatever it be it's not it's not gonna affect him that much mm. um but you're absolutely right it does affect his his image is and it it might directly affect certain deals that he gets in the future people might see oh anti-lgbt this guy was in some big controversy last year well well let's not let's not pay him to do this deal or whatever it is right so you're right i mean these things can pop up and even if they're small right this is in my opinion this is relatively small in comparison Mm -hmm. to like some bigger internet culture stuff but it's like um yeah, it still has lasting effect. It still echoes, and it's it's could absolutely cause problems, especially for the other people involved, like Tim the Tatman, mm-hmm. Doctor Disrespect, all these other people that that are, are backing him. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's just ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. It's internet drama, and it's just people, you know, fi- trying to find uh, trying to find something to lash out about, right? right. So trying to find a, a a scapegoat, as it were, right? Mm-hmm. Not that Nick Merck's really, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, it's just like trying to point the finger at someone. It's, yeah, what... Speaking of uh, Nick Merck's, I'm quite curious, and I, I would like to ask if any of the Tech Times audience is actually Twitch streamers who actually publish a few of their content on YouTube. Like, I've noticed a current trend where Twitch streamers are actually publishing content on YouTube, and their content is carrying not necessarily games, but mostly uh, public commentary regarding uh, po- political stuff do those videos actually carry much more views now rather than the games you actually stream like i figured there's a strategy here why they actually advertise this on youtube well rumble rumble is becoming a big player right yeah. um, maybe not a big player but rumble and that's very much a, a right-leaning platform so clearly politics does in some even if even if only like minuscule definitely has some weight in the live streaming sphere, right? Even if people don't want to. Uh, so, am I wrong it. here? <laughs> is, is the poli- poli- uh, identity politics actually not bleeding out to them? They are actually going out of their way to actually face it head on through their content. Yes. Well, maybe not for everyone. Maybe not for every creator. But I mean, look at look at this recent stuff with Pokemon and XQC. It's clearly. It's all fueled in a sense, right? I mean, maybe not, maybe not, uh, maybe not scripted like you know, WWE or something, but it feels all contrived in a sense. Like it's like a mm-hmm. show. It's literally a show. Um, yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, uh, I have a question. <clears throat> I have a question for you. Okay, so the people that that don't promote, right, or 
in this context, I, I don't agree with this, but the anti LGBTQ people that get castrated, where whether it be, you know, however it is, uh, um, right? We know they get strung up, right? They're done. Like people hate them. Yeah. They try to ruin careers. <clears throat> Does the trans activist community, do they promote anyone or do they only destroy? Like if you're mm-hmm. a straight man and you say, whatever it is they want you to say or what they like to hear, do they push you and promote you? I, I haven't really, I I haven't really seen anything where it's like, you know. Yeah, the, the thing for me Hassan. regarding this is, the thing for me regarding yeah, this is, Biker. we don't even know if Nick Merck is actually anti-LGBTQ. This is I, I, I doubt just he is. him providing his comments regarding that, like, he doesn't want kids to, at an early age, like, how many of you guys actually did feel that you didn't do anything stupid when you were kids or made any pertinent mm. decisions to your lives. Like, what ages are we talking about? Like, did you yeah. guys already know what you want to be at the age of four and five? You no, be, well, spend an entire yeah. lifetime building a personality <laughs> on who you'll be eventually. No, no, no this and that LGBT and LGBTQ community, but I figured they went through the same process. That's why, where they, why they got to where they are now. It's that road actually carries Very much you. reactive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing for us. All of us here are, are straight. It's, it's no mystery. But we could <laughs> also just say the same thing for us. Life experiences actually molded us when we grew up and we came out this way. If I made yeah. an, a different experience when I was a kid, I couldn't necessarily say that I won't be the way I am now. Like, if we're mm. going to be telling kids who they'll be, who they're supposed to be when they're going up. They were going to get a lot of princesses, pirates, and astronauts, preferably p- astronauts <laughs> in the future. Yeah. 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 I mean, so it... if Nick Merckx, I, I don't know his character, whether he's anti-LGBTQ, I kind of figure he's not. It's just a statement of his preference of not bringing kids into this and using this as a political platform for something that you want to achieve as a group. I I don't think that if we're going to be marketing kids as having a choice, let them have a choice on their own. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of the point I think, right. Is to just don't like exist exist and please by all means exist in any way shape or form that you choose that you're happy that you're comfortable um just like i don't push my heterosexuality on anyone like i would never i would never all right i've been asked before by you know gay people um you know you should try it right like try it maybe you like it and I mean, maybe, who knows, right? I don't know. I don't want to, but, you know, who knows? I Maybe I do. But I would never, as a heterosexual man, tell a gay person or a gay guy, hey, you should try to hook up with a chick, right? Because that's not who they are. Yeah. So if a someone believes... That's a great point, actually. You know, that, that you know, like saying leave the kids alone, I feel like that, that doesn't even need to be said. That's common sense be, yeah leave the kids alone it's a question yeah. for you guys can you can you actually recall a movie where the plot is the guy actually ungays one guy <laughs> is there a movie like that or is, is it well, a question? Well, i'm just curious if you guys heard of any movie like that because i have someone gets someone gets <laughs> ungay where he has a gay friend and he uses so. the plot to ungay his friend oh my god no no, but right? I, would watch that. I would watch that movie. You watch it <laughs> just to see if it's possible. I mean, it's like Star Wars. That shit ain't possible. But the reverse is know. actually. But the reverse is actually in the media. Like yeah, we do have. Yes. We do have the ever legendary Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie, so I don't I know. Watched, what I watched. I watched it, and I'll be completely honest. I watched it until I seen the. I was young at this time and it just 
wasn't something I wanted to watch. Like I started it and I was like, I don't know, this is maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe deep yeah, down I'm gay and it made me feel uncomfortable with my own sexuality. I don't know, but I stopped watching it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of... Hmm. I'm going to digress a bit here, but that movie is kind of impressive in a way because even up to now, when they made that back then, I don't even know who their target market was. What <laughs> cowboys, I'll tell you that. Well, it's, it's Definitely not the Marlboro the, Man. The Nick Merck stuff, it's like... Uh... It's funny that Call of Duty, right? Call of Duty. Yeah, is we did discuss this before, right? <laughs> yeah. Call of Duty, a game where you, you know, fight, you know, and mm. you know, right, Russians and stuff like that. It's like you shoot people and stuff. They're trying to stand up for good causes. Like, again, like it's, it's, it's kind of you know, weird it's, for it's, a, it's a game that's stuff, filled but... with stereotypes when it comes to who's right and who's not. Exactly. A little bit. Uh, yeah. Especially for, I mean, given the fact that Activision is embroiled in its own, you know, sexual misconduct yeah. controversies left and right. Like, like yeah. what? Like, are we really doing this today? Like, really? You know what I mean? It's like the amount of shit Activision has done over the past. It's like it, it almost feels like they're trying to right the wrongs that they've done. And it's like it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Um, and the yeah. funny thing is, gaming before was the platform for the free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, gaming. Look, you look at Grand Theft. You should Auto, be able right? to freely talk about how you feel, what you want to, you know what I mean? Like, again, like everyone has their own opinions. It's not that I'm anti-LGBT or whatever it be. It's that I have my own opinions, and it, you know, it's just I, I don't want to think about that kind of stuff, and it's just right. not in my purview, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I agree completely. And well, you know, guys, like like some people switch genders. We're going to switch topics. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> so, <laughs> and we can we can do way. that. <laughs> Was that off the dome? Oh my god! Yeah, we can do that, and y'all better not get mad because it's our right. <laughs> we feel like talking about something else. <laughs> so, so good. what's next, that Christian? Good. Hey, that segue was brought to you guys by impatience. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that that segue was brought to you by time management. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our second topic for today. Oh, this is a... On Friday, U.S. Coast Guard Rear Admiral John Mauger has confirmed that the five men on missing Titanic sub to be dead after debris reveals catastrophic implosion. Ocean Gate states the five dead on the Titan sub were two explorers. Chris, with a service that Ocean Gate intends to contribute to the tourism sector, will this hinder the progress of similar endeavors? Oh, absolutely. But I don't know for how long. Uh, I think you know, for Ocean Gate. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, definitely. That name, they they, they, they will probably have to, <laughs> to, to rebrand. rebrand. Yeah, for sure. But but so, so I'm sorry, who's asking? Who's asking, Chris? But uh, like, do you mean just the ocean or do you mean space as well? Like, do you mean uh, similar moon? endeavors? Uh. Primarily, right now, I would say, I mean, first, let me say that, you know, my heart goes out to the friends and family of these people. Like, that's a terrible, terrible tragedy that that no one could predict or obviously would ever want. And it's it's incredibly, incredibly sad. Um, But with that being said, I would like to talk about this, you know, in a very matter of fact way right like um yeah i think, I think right now and and like i said i don't know how long this is going to last this the ripple effect of this tragedy is going to last because we do live in a very fast-paced world where i mean i imagine within the next week or so this is a thing of the past real i mean obviously but you know there'll be another news cycle and we'll be talking about something else but um i mean if you know right now if someone said uh I don't know if they could give away free tickets right now, to be honest. Like no one is doing this. And well, maybe like Chris Angel. Oh yeah, maybe, yeah. Chris <laughs> Might be just one way. One. Like I can get out of there. Like, yeah, I mean, you can't, he just he can just walk out there though, right? Like he, <laughs> that dude's a devil. I don't give a damn what anybody says. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely um but I mean it's also you know, looking at this from 
a like an engineering standpoint and a, a very practical perspective, this was avoidable. I mean, just like the Titanic itself. That yeah. that the Titanic sinking was avoidable. The captain would not listen and just steamed right on through an iceberg laden section of water. This has been documented. You know, you can Google it. Um, he James was... Cameron actually made similar comments. OK, that, as you're saying okay, um, yeah. yesterday, he said he said this is exactly what you're saying. It's like mm. the, the Ocean Gate issue, um, you know, draws like it draws parallels to the Titanic mm. crash for, for this very reason, because okay, yeah. both could have easily been avoided. Right. Right. I mean, James Cameron himself told Ocean Gate, told these people that it's not safe to go that that far deep, that far down. Mm. Um, so clearly and and, you know, there's an engineer as well. I believe Christian had talked about that the other day to us. There's an engineer who even said, you know, this is not up to par. And he was, you know, cut. He was fired. So clearly there were a ton of, you know, alarm bells ringing, but mm -hmm. no one cared. No one cared. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. It could have been. A, it's, it's so avoidable. But, uh, yeah. you know, money and yeah, power the, matters the, more, right? The firing yeah, of that engineer is a whole nother story. Yeah. 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 Similar to the last topic, I think, with the whole walk thing. Yeah. Diversity, inclusion. Diversity, inclusion. Fantastic. If you meet the criteria, I mean, hiring willy nilly, hiring willy nilly. Yeah, just because. Yeah. Look, at, look at the U.S. government. Our <clears throat> our vice president is vice president just because. And she yeah, said, diversity has never built a bridge before, but math and science does. Yeah, I mean, and you know, if if very if the poignant. problem is fifty year old, yeah, that's true, yeah. If the if the problem is if the problem is fifty year old white men dominate a sector, then you start from the ground up, right? Like push, or not push, yeah. make make available, make interesting these things like STEM to children. Don't do it when they're in college. It's like, hey, you should do this because we don't. They're you know eight percent of all in. I don't know. This is a. I don't even this is a an example like you know a very low yeah. percentage of engineers or submarine pilots are female you should do this first this person needs to be to have a general interest yeah you know because you're not just it's not a remote control boat you know what i'm saying there's there's things at stake here and yeah the criteria needs to be met the mental Acuity criteria needs to be met before any other boxes are checked. Absolutely. And I'm not yeah, blaming absolutely. this on the pilot. I don't yeah. know who she was. Obviously, I'm not. But I'm just saying. It's, it's kind it's, of a fine line right it's... now when it comes to hiring persons for the job. Like, if we're going to put diversity first, wouldn't it have been much more to get the right person for it? Whether it be, I think it's, it becomes much more racial if you consider looking at race. For sure. I mean, yeah. look at affirmative affirmative action, bro. Affirmative action has been around for two decades now. Or three and this is, and this is coming from me, a minority. Like I much more would rather be hired for my skill rather than for my skin, because that would be much more insulting, at least for me. I'm just speaking. Yeah, for yeah. My... I agree. Yeah, I agree too. Yeah. But, but I mean, you look at, you look at Ryan and myself, and uh, I look at you guys a lot. <laughs> yeah, and you know we are. That sounds creepy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we, but there's no, there's no, there's no one saying we need to hire more white guys. You know yeah, I mean? you, you don't hire that. for the job that's actually gonna fit the person. Like we, we can talk about this based on what we know right now and everything that's being said is regarding all the safety procedures that's done all the failings that happened that created that implosion but then if the gist of the thing is that not the right person was in place to actually prevent that that's a major thing that actually is prevalent not just in ocean gate but in every company in the world if they're following that mantra this could Absolutely. happen to any company 
Yeah. Take one Bud sector, Light. Like, <laughs> one sector that I think is um, starting to do this or has been talking about doing it or maybe has been doing it is uh, pilots and airlines. They want to hire diversity. Mm. You know, and yes, I mean, it's fantastic. <laughs> But I don't care if my pilot is a six-year-old boy. If he's the best damn pilot on earth, then him. let's go. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care if you're, you know, white, black, brown. I, I don't care. Male, female, neither, or whatever yeah. the hell is going on now. Like, I don't care. I just want a good pilot in the cockpit. That's all I care about. And I That's feel like. it should matter. I feel like most people feel the same way. But for some reason, the majority is somewhat silent on a lot of these things. And it's a very loud minority that's making this influence in these decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe because most you, uh... normal practical people have a job and don't have time to bitch online 24-7. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I've never had yeah, time it, to protest. It could be. <laughs> like I've never had time to protest. Your actually trolls online and rummage through people's stuff yeah i've never even knew where a protest was i've never been invited to a protest i've never i don't know how these things (laughs) happen i feel like they're they're fucking like you feel kind of left out not being invited (laughs) that's in riots i I want to protest something (laughs) something please like jesus like yeah would you uh bring back the Mexican pizza? I'll stand in front of Taco Bell all day. <laughs> what? What? That's a thing. Didn't yeah. They discontinued the Mexican pizza. <laughs> no. Um, oh, they didn't. Oh, shit. Would you guys prefer to go in the sub or in the space? Right? Would you go in underwater to the Titanic or even whatever it be? You know, I don't know. Anything underwater, or would you go if if they provide the me? The credentials of the ones that are going to be piloting it and are going to be manning them. Yeah, sure. Why not? But if you're going to be not going to be transparent, who will be in that can of soup with? (laughs) No. Right now? Not a chance. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, right? Hindsight or, you know. Hindsight is 2020, but everything is actually preventable. Like, that's the thing. They just hired people that actually have the skill to look into the safety features of it. My God, h- how far have you fallen if James Cameron is actually the ones critiquing you guys? Well, I don't know, man. James Cameron is subject matter expert kind of on this whole type when of it comes to, When it comes to water, but when it comes to scientific uh, safety stuff, like he's not even a scientist and he's able to yeah, put some bolts into what you've done. He's He's gone down to the Titanic over 30 times. Yeah, he does he's, this he's, a lot. No, he's yeah. If they're you know, he's a director. He's not like a you know. You're absolutely yeah. right. He's no scientist, but still, like he, if there's anyone, if if you're gonna ask anyone about sub technology and stuff like that, yeah. it would be him. Like he, and I mean, he has he's very much dedicated to that. Like he just did way of the water. So the, the guy knows yeah. the way of the water, man. Like, he built he an entire knows. civilization. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Yeah, but that's the thing. If if. <laughs> If we we look at the point that James Cameron is making, like if someone like him, albeit he has experience in the field, can actually poke holes into this, mm. the CEO could have had a much better picture on what he's looking at because he's actually well, in it. That's my thing. I, I, I'm convinced that the that the CEO had the bigger picture. He knew. Like he, there's no, there's no shot that he didn't know that there would be, you know. Why like, even write it in the first place? I guess anybody. He's money, with him, right? What's money? He was down money. there though. Money. Yeah, money. yeah. I mean, Biggest, it's a fantastic gig. It's all man. that matters in this world: money, 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 money. Can he you know, be and... paid without him actually piloting the the damn thing? No, but. <laughs> hey money matters money matters money talks in this world you know 200 grand that's a lot of money you know even if you're dead yeah <laughs> that mm. can i don't know if he had kids and stuff but you never know you never know like where his you know ideas and where his mind was but yeah i'm convinced that the ceo knew exactly what was going on like not not to the point where like you know not to the point where he was like you know it's a conspiracy or anything it, 
Right. He knew that he knew the dangers and he, mm. he just went about it anyway, you know? And, you know, it's just the negligence essentially. It's like, you know, I get 200 grand. If the, if it goes to shit, it goes to shit. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Right. Like at least he's up 200 grand no matter what. Right. I mean, well, I mean that you made a good point, man. There's something you said there is he knew the risks. They all knew the risks. Yeah. I think the shot that came out that they were made to sign waivers before they actually boarded it. Of course they were. Of course. Of course. I mean, mean, sign your life away. (laughs) So this is one of those, this is a, a, uh, kind of a new thing, right? This luxury travel stuff. Like yeah. I've, I remember a few years ago that we were talking about uh, Blue started with space, the space hotels and shit. Like started with it? the Blue yeah. Origin thing, with the Blue Origin. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fantastic if you have the money, go for yeah. it. But if you're going to be coordinating these things, and because this isn't. All right, so airplane travel, right? It's been around for 100 years now or whatever it's been. Um, Obviously, there were some hiccups in the beginning. We've got it down to a science, right? This is airplane travel is down to a science, whereas the number of plane crashes every year is, I don't know how many, but it's really low. And how long did that take, right? Right. Over 100 years. Yeah, Yeah, so. A little less than 100 years. Not to not to diminish what's happened here with Ocean Gate, but I mean, this is an entirely new frontier. Frontier, yeah, and <laughs> you know, and God forbid, once we start, you know, selling tickets to space, it's not going to all go super smooth. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. not. You would be you would be an idiot to assume even. That- into your yeah. into your point, Chris. Like when the Titanic, the first one, actually happened, nothing stopped the people from actually building bigger ones. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's another good point. Yeah, it's well, the, I mean, the whole Titanic. Animation. There's a there's a the whole Titanic thing was because of the chocolate um, empire. Y'all know that, right? What? Yeah, the, the Hershey's. The guy from the Hershey's chocolate uh-huh. was like. Like, I don't. That's how, I don't know yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah. Search that shit. The Hershey's Wait, what? conspiracy, Titanic conspiracy. Oh man, that's something for the viewers right there. If y'all ain't familiar with, if you are familiar with it, please uh, kind of give me a refresher and let Ryan <laughs> know <laughs> in the comments because I can't think of. I'm I don't know if curious. he was. Well, I know there's Hershey's... a couple of conspiracies, right? There's a couple of billionaires that were on that that ship. Yeah, and Hershey's and not just one. one. They hmm. said it was all to take over the chocolate empire the market they wanted to corner Damn. the chocolate market yeah it's crazy but i mean though i mean these things will always be surrounded by you know what maybe it's like what this, is, maybe it's like and, that yeah yeah and ocean gate i yeah no. they're gonna I mean, the only to the bad. only other i've the only other, they're gonna change your name <laughs> the, the only <laughs> other uh acceptable conspiracy name for this would be watergate but it's taken too bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> sink, sink gate, maybe. I don't know. Sink gate. <laughs> Can they have a rule not to name your ships after something that already sunk? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's uh, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a tragedy. It could have been avoided. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, the like we were talking and... about off camera, right? Like, um. I feel like that we have the technology, obviously. I mean, we're going to, you know, wherever it is we're going to space and all this stuff. The technology is readily available to make this. Yeah, life but what, what do we know? What is one constant about technology? It's never perfect. It never That's works. Very true. It That's never very true. works. Even if you have like, you know, never works the way you intend it. Uh, there's always problems. I mean, even with stuff that we we have been doing, like PC stuff, right? Like, it's always an issue. Always. Right. This shit happens. Shit happens. Like, the, and there's nothing really you can do about it other than, you know, well, at least we learned from that mistake, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and if and shit if we, didn't happen, then there wouldn't be waivers, right? Yeah. Yeah, and if yeah. we're going to be, <laughs> if anyone affected by this is going to be taking solace in the situation, like, 
whatever findings they might get from this could actually save lives in the future. Exactly. It, it could yeah, actually yeah. prevent any issues. Just the silver lining there. Just so they follow the rule of hiring people fit for the job. Yeah. I mean, oh, if that's, that's the, the that's only it. thing that comes out of that would be fantastic. Yeah, but you'll you'll never know. <laughs> that's the beauty of life. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it's uh I don't know, man. It's just one of those things like then I watched that thing when they actually announced it was kind of emotional. But did you see like, there's a several, I don't know if there's one, there's definitely one already documentary name, like uh, um Pat that was the hell. What's it? so fast. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was like the what? second or third day last like, this this past week, like Wednesday, I think. Wednesday, someone already like has a documentary name, like patented, whatever. What's the word? Copyrighted. Copyrighted. It released in England or something. Yeah. yeah. And they said it was terrible. But yeah, I have regarding, a regarding the documentary, I have a it's just going to be a compilation of the news reports, right? Since it's this yeah. early. Backgrounds, backgrounds, yeah, that type stuff. Uh, I'm waiting for the Netflix one, to be honest. Um, but uh, I have a question. It's like though. a little like gross, right? Don't you think it's just gross? Like how that. Oh, that's so like. I mean, don't, I don't monetize it, it yet. Just wait a few years. The the news of the implosion hadn't even been released yet and i had already heard about a documentary like how the hell do you have this documentary what if they survive what's the documentary now like what even was it yeah yeah and all right so but i want to know i want your guys' take on the savage internet being the savage internet and the mm -hmm. amount of memes and jokes that were made do you find this uh we we reported on this mm. on the site um you know that cultural what they call them, cultural observers which is a new thing I didn't even know that was a fucking thing cultural yeah. cultural cultural observers are sickened by the internet's Man, mean culture exists like it's just going to happen like sh come on like get over yourselves like Again, like the internet's gonna do what it does best, and it's gonna mm. fucking make light of situations. Like it's yeah. just like uh, it just makes me roll everybody. my eyes, man. Like, sure, you guys are disgusted, whatever. Like, get over it. Like, yeah. people are gonna make fun of shit, and it's uh, that's that. Like, yeah, no matter well, how fun, sad and you know. devastating. Yeah, so no, like, and and we and we can all come together and laugh about it, and you know, like, you know, it's mm. it's a tragedy, sure, it's sad what happened. What, like why can't we not just like have a little levity right like, just a tiny right. bit of levity right we have to sit here and wallow like fuck that fuck yeah. that like i'm not doing yeah. that yeah. especially are we people still I questioning know. I this people like in 2023 are we still questioning this when a majority of the views on youtube are car crashes like yeah like <laughs> the internet's gonna do what it does best it always yeah. makes fun of shit and like you know just and honestly to, like, live with that. that's why we love the internet is because it's that's what it is like if you don't want to yeah. see some crazy ass you know what i'm saying like and it's it's weird to me that nowadays it's strange if you say to someone oh if you don't if you don't like these things then don't go on social media it's like telling somebody not to go like Breathe. to eat or, you know what i mean it's yeah. like it's like what do you mean don't yeah. go on social media it's like you realize you don't have to go on social media yeah, they're absolutely right. You don't, but yeah, but people it's not like, like when it's like yeah. if you don't like it, don't go on there. No, even then, you can still filter out stuff, right? I mean, it's not like yeah. you can't filter out things. Um, if yeah. you want, the, the option's there to filter shit yeah. out. But it's gonna block. Well, if yeah, people have the ability to actually ignore facts. They could probably ignore something like this. It's amazing, bro. They can ignore <laughs> facts, but not jokes. It's <laughs> insane. Cultural observers. Interesting. Like, I, I want to be one of those observers. Yeah, how much is that? What's the what's the yearly for that <laughs> shit? Yeah, whatever they're doing is actually well, we're not condoning it. It's gross in a way based on the timing, but it's the internet. Like it's been oh, yeah. this way for a long time, and society still moved on. I mean, did you see the sun? One of the suns was getting in on the action. 
not yeah. not yeah. making fun of so much as it was just like he got some free um tickets he some got blink, some, some blink tickets well, yeah well no he guy? got free no 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 he got uh well yeah yeah he he did that but he went to a blink rennie concert like the day after you know the news broke essentially of like oh this is yeah. up blah 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 but he also got like he was on twitter and he was getting um he got like uh, a, a free subscription to some girls only fans she was like oh you know my my heart goes out to you you know what i mean like this kind of stuff like this is the internet man like, like what do you expect what do you expect is gonna fucking happen like people are gonna my heart practice. goes out to you look Bro, at my like, vagina exactly like this type of shit is this is where we're at right now with the internet yeah. like, you're gonna have to kind of move like i don't know man it's like what do you expect like what do you expect this shit happens all the time yeah i mean as as someone who makes jokes at the most inappropriate times like uh as like a coping mechanism um if there is something like dire going on in the world a nice meme can bring you out of a mental funk yeah so be like even if you know like you you do that little that little grin and like a half chuckle and then you catch yourself like oh shit i shouldn't be laughing at the, this the like, internet sucks for a good majority of the time right the internet does yeah. suck it's like it's it's a poison it's it, it like it's definitely but at least we can all come together and any, laugh any of you guys think that it was easy to make memes of these guys just because they're rich yeah yeah i think the whole the whole really situation weird. was the whole situation was a gold mine for for meme makers yeah. I mean, look, take one look at the sub. Take one look at the sub and you're not going to fucking laugh. Like, yeah. Take one look at the interior of that sub and you're not going to laugh at that. Like, yeah. come on. Because we've like, had tragedies before, similar magnitude as this. But the amount of memes that came out over the past couple of days has been r really, really huge. I kind of think that just, just because everyone wants to piss on the rich man, it was just, it was just too yeah. easy. Yeah, but if right. you yeah. put yeah. the the shoe on the other foot, if there were this happened to five fishermen well, that are suddenly lost in the sea, I don't they, think well, it, it wouldn't have that much memes. Mm. It wouldn't have been broken the news. Well, I mean, the care. thing is, right? Like, there's that, there's that. I'm sure there's a dopamine hit for these people when they see that their memes have been shared, you know, a hundred million times, right? So you want to you want to make memes about trending topics, and what was more trending than Ocean Gate? Yeah. It's Took over the week, right? Took over yeah, the entire week. That's what over. everyone talked about. Yeah. And all like all I seen was memes and I laughed. The only thing that I can actually remember that <laughs> is that. a similar <laughs> situation as this is actually the balloon boy. Anyone actually remember that thing? The, the kid that was like allergic to air that was actually trapped in a balloon and people were actually what? covering it. All of a sudden they discovered the kid wasn't actually in it. There was a Wait, lot of what? sympathy. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, I don't remember this. Was it, it a Chinese? Was it a Chinese? It wasn't movie? any meme back then, but when they found out it was just a hoax and the kid wasn't in, the meme started to flood in. Mm. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah. Take this for the people that are old enough. Like, imagine meme culture during the OJ thing. <laughs> like that would be, yeah. Like think. I mean, about there, there was. It yeah, still is. The people are still, still is, making yeah. memes of the Bronco, Bronco with the police chase. There's a ton <laughs> of memes of that. There's a ton yeah. of memes of that. Yeah. Like, um, Norm McDonald, rest in peace, now. lost his job for that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm all curious right, that's, though. That's... Uh, before we switch topics, I'm curious. Mm. Like, in the comments, yeah, section, right. let me know if you'd go to space or if you'd go take an ocean gate. Like, let me know. Like, I'm actually curious. Yeah, me too. yeah, I have a, I have an answer, and maybe uh, if we get enough replies in the comments, we'll uh, we'll give our opinion in the next the next episode. Um, Hell yeah. but yeah, this uh, I think this we've we've sunk this topic, so let's move on to the next one. Really, no smart segues, nothing, bro. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. I'll, I'll give you that. Okay, That's but good. once again. Uh, we have to reiterate our our hearts uh go to the friends and yeah. families and those that were lost. Absolutely. Our third topic for today. Uh Smosh co-founders Anthony Padilla and Ian Hecox reunite to acquire the Smosh brand from Rhett and Link. 
The duo have reunited on as on-screen comedy partners and off-screen business associates to acquire a majority ownership stake in Smosh from Mythical Entertainment, the production company of YouTube talk show stars Rhett and Link. The terms of Padilla and Hecox's buyout of Smosh from Mythical aren't being disclosed. Ryan, do you think the return is a bit too late as most of the YouTube OGs have moved on to other platforms and content? Great question. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a big Smosh guy. I didn't really watch Smosh back in the day, but um, I will say, I mean, 25 million subscribers, right? They have pretty good back 25.7. So, but rounding up, that's 26. And uh, you know, their video, their return video, which released three days ago, already has seven million views. Which, sure, it's an announcement. They're returning. It's it's got a lot of hype built around it, right? Not necessarily an everyday content release. So you expect it's going to have a pretty big, you know, draw, view draw. But I think, I think, I don't know. I think that Smosh might be, you know, not necessarily dead. They do get some pretty good views here and there. If you look through their catalog of the past year or so, they, they can get anywhere. They don't really cross a million, not all the time. Like even this, this is 11 days ago, and that's 964,000 views. So they didn't even cross a million views with that. And they have 25 million, 26, I said, right? 26, we're rounding up. Million subscribers. That says a lot, right? Now, with Padilla back, with the, with the boys back, I'm sure that they will get a good, you know, they'll get a crescendo. But I don't think it'll last. I don't think it'll last. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of our creative ideas, our juices are kind of lost after we're in our thirties, right? Around 30, we kind of lose that creative pizzazz that we once had. Um, so I, I don't know, I guess we'll see, I guess we'll really see. It really depends upon how, how they bring back the content from previous years. And if it's, if it's as good, right? If it, it, we're in a different time now, when, when this, when this was big, Smosh was big, what, 2013, 2012 right that was kind of around the time when they were like pretty popular it, it, humor has changed a lot humor has changed mm. dramatically i'm sure that they can get some good skits off of here and there but i don't know if it'll have the same it, it won't taste the same right it won't taste the same as it did back in the back in the day um so yeah i, I don't know you're absolutely right though a lot of these big content creators have moved on um yeah it's such a weird such a weird world youtube you know one day you're like you can be on the top of the world the next you know you've kind of lost yeah. your whole community um yeah so their <laughs> return do you think do you think their return was for the sake of what they built or uh they missed it or red and link wanted to offload it or like what what prompted this hmm. return it's a great question too I think it's a bit um, of retribution for their part, particularly for Anthony, because he was the one who actually fought for them having control in the creatives. This was based on his video before. That's the reason why yeah. he left, because he never actually felt that he had control over the content. And there was so no. much red tape for, for them to, to, to get their ideas out. And these, so that, these that's the main issue that he had. So for him to actually come back with his best friend again, Yep. and be able to prove that they could actually work with just them, no Defy Media actually holding their hand, it would be a big thing for them. The thing is for this one, and I, I think he did admit this in a one-on-one -on -one interview with Ian, I, Ian Hecox, that they felt that the humor that they brought before, because their platform right now is skit comedy, which actually yep. costs a lot when it comes to production. Yep. Hmm. And if yep. their humor doesn't hit, their audience like the way that it did it did it's it's gonna cost them a lot like they and, did admit absolutely. that their their humor actually grew up with them and it took them a long time to actually admit that that they need, need to make adjustments they now brought in new blood with them like i kind of figured they wouldn't be writing everything themselves that they would get new opinions sure. based on content from younger ones I don't know, maybe they could just write it with fresh minds driving the company and with just them offering advice on how to handle the business. But well, I think ups on Rhett and Link for actually taking care of the brand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
I think too, like comedy in this day and age, like if you're not doing like live shows, you know, like, um, you know, let's say stand up comedy, right? For example, yep. um, like the best stand up comedy is when someone can make you laugh at something that you should not be laughing at. Right. You feel like, like, oh my God, yeah. you're, that's crazy. That's funny. But like, if you're, I feel to... like every conversation we guys have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what, that's what makes me it's, laugh. Dave like, Chappelle she, absolutely yeah. excels yeah. in that category. Yeah. Right. So if you're trying to be PC and you want to do skit comedy, uh, and you can't be risky anymore, like they can't make a transgender joke. You can't. No matter how I funny mean, it is, I don't know, man. YouTube's not going to allow I, it. They're going to get shit on by whoever. Like that's my thing. Humor is different now, but I, you shouldn't yeah. cave to that shit. Yeah, it's going right? to be. Don't boring. shackle yourself yeah, to uh, to what are the, what are the term is modern audiences. Don't shackle yourself to the modern audience like ploy. Just do be funny. Just be funny. Like make jokes and yeah. people get pissed. Take they risks. get pissed. Like whatever. Or, yeah. Take risks. I mean, some yeah. of the funniest stuff out there is from taking risks, right? I mean, yeah. you, to your point, to your point. Like, yeah, that's why yeah. big ups on Ted Sarandos for having Dave Chappelle's back in his last special, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because the Twitter lynch mob was actually how to get him. As they always are. They're always, you know, it's just such a ridiculous. It's, it, the times nowadays are so ridiculous. You can't even, you can't, you, we can't have funnies anymore. We can't, have, we can't be funny. We can't laugh, you know? It's you know like what I everything think, has you know to be think super the, serious. Yeah, you know, I think the difference between getting canceled and being uncancelable, uncancelable, like yeah, Chappelle, Joe Rogan, like they're they're in this stratosphere where you just can't cancel them, but they also <laughs> don't apologize. No, as soon as you apologize, it's like showing the white underbelly, and then yeah, you done. can add Bill Burr to that list because he's yeah. pretty much uncancelable. <laughs> And that's why I yeah. don't think Smosh really will deliver, right? Yeah, I don't because because you're absolutely right. They have to toe the line in a sense, right? They mm. can't they can't cross the line. Yeah, um, yeah. I, it's I don't know. Maybe maybe they maybe they'll find a way. Maybe they'll find a way to like actually make it work. But yeah. and, you um, know, nostalgia jokes on like nostalgia and lifestyle are so niche. You know, like um. I like again, I keep going back to stand up comedy, but like, and you know, hate me or whatever you want. Um, I can't really get into with with the exception of Ali Wong, I don't really get into female stand up specials because I can't relate. Yeah, you know what I mean? And it, and if it's not like a Dave Chappelle, if it's a it's if it's an incredibly um like uh what's his name, Fluffy, uh Iglesias, what's his name? I am. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Anyway. Fluff. Fluffy, yeah. Basta, yeah. Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah, Gabriel. Yeah. I know he's hilarious. And when he talks about things that are universal, I laugh. But when he goes like hardcore, like Mexican stuff, like I'm not, I don't, I can't relate. Hmm. So yeah. if Smosh can't do broad comedy politics i mean nobody's laughing at trump anymore right that's the only thing that's okay you can make fun of trump all day snl's kind of moved into making fun of biden because he's an easy target really? but i, I mean watch snl in years exactly because <laughs> pretty much snl is all about easy targets they, yeah. they that's the way they write their skits <laughs> yeah it's it's you know it's uh it's going to be very difficult to to do to increase what they are now to go above what they are now with comedy skits if you're not willing to piss a pushing few people. the bar yeah not for nothing when anthony actually left he actually discovered a part of entertainment that i de didn't actually see in him before that he he has this talk show where he interviews people one on one He's actually pretty good yeah, at it. Very it, good. That's why Marsh can possibly lean into a much more mature content like that. Like they could flip their brand. We still have this uh, we play site 
but we have this informative stuff as well for those that are actually in our age bracket that grew up with us. Yeah. So Good they question. have that to go with. Do you think he'll keep going? Do you think he'll keep doing that? Like his own personal? I think channel, so. I think own. he's much more comfortable with it. Yeah. I hope he does. This is, those are very good. His interviews are very good. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. So well, yeah. the, YouTube itself is in a weird place right now. Mm. I mean, the whole the whole content creation sphere is in a weird, weird place, I feel like. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you know, that's that's kind of why I like uh like what we're doing here. Like I like to say shit that you know, maybe people don't, but you know, we're, we're not anywhere right now. We have, you know, we have, you know, the couple that, that like to interact and comment and uh, I hope they appreciate it because, you know, once we, once we get, maybe once we take off or whatever, um, it's going to stay the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? And hopefully we're going to hit that strive. Whereas like we were talking about in the first topic, uh, how people are just kind of like over the whole fucking I'm pissed off and don't buy this product. Don't play this game. Don't listen to this person. Don't watch this movie, whatever it is. People are over it. And I think yeah. we, 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 we've hit a place, right? Where cancel culture there for a minute was like Godzilla. Like he just yeah. coming in fucking everybody up. My take on this is, has anyone noticed that no one has been canceled for being woke? And woke yeah. is so goddamn cringe. For bro. being super woke, no one has been canceled for it, I, I think. No, but I mean, they, well, they kind of are. I think that's the most attractive part in it. Like, they, yeah. they, they, they're, they're kind of um, shooting themselves in the, look at Ezra Miller, super woke, weirdo, <laughs> right? He's already been <laughs> accused, if not charged. I don't remember if he was charged or. I believe he was. Uh, he wasn't or, convicted. He was charged yeah, for droning, right? He was, already, he was like one of the first. He was doing a lot of. He yeah, um, I mean, he had a gun. Like it was, it was, yeah. when the police raided his place, like one of the one of the babies had a bullet in their in their I mouth. I don't think like, Ezra Miller is woke. He's just insane. That's the no, thing. he's woke, bro. He's woke. He's he's. Well, he goes goes by, they, I keep saying he, but it's a he goes by they. I, I'm sorry. They them, yeah. They it's, he goes by them. I, and, I'm, and it's. And I think it's really annoying. I think the flash for... is tanking, man. It is. It is. It and only I, made, I, I think, 30, I 40, assume... 40 million in its first weekend, I think. I have to assume it it's be wrong. globally. It's not the story. It's not the character. It's not DC. It's got to be him. Well, I think it had, I think it had a little bit with def, definitely a majority of, of like the not going to watch the movie has to do with him for sure. Mm. But it's also the story. The story isn't that great. Mm, like, well, it was. It was very much overhyped. Um, very much overhyped. Very much like kind of not necessarily cookie cutter, but mm -hmm. it's just not. It's just like okay, this stuff happened, and that you know, like it's. I don't know. It, it, it's not. It's not like Into the Spider Verse or uh, Beyond right. the Spider. Whatever it is. that movie was. Amazing. Anything, that movie was incredible. Anything. No one is actually just interested in watching it since everyone knows it's just a reset of things. Hmm. That's another good point. Like, yeah. uh, why would you watch certain movie if it's not going to be relevant to the next one? Like yeah. this happened with the new Fifty Two. Yeah, that's well, that's actually, I will say that there is kind of a tie-in with the next Aquaman movie, but but again, who cares? You're, to your point, like who cares? Like DC's kind of over. We already know it's over, right? We already know it's ending. So hmm. who cares about Aquaman two? You know. Yeah, they should just they should just put all chips on Deadpool and let him be the biggest asshole ever, and that's where they'll make their money. Deadpool. Yeah, I love me some Deadpool. That's the biggest Marvel. asshole it ever. Like... Oh, it is Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking X Men. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, my fault. Yeah, DC's fucked. Yeah, speaking of biggest assholes ever, uh, Padilla and Hecox can no longer play the the type of characters they did before. Why? Is that never where they watch the Smosh? This is another case of. Can I do my content that I did before today type of deal where they look oh, back yeah, at no. the characters I they actually they, played? I kind of hope they don't, right? Like, like no, Time's up, bro. Yeah, but like you guys were different back then too, one. And, and um, as I said, like humor has changed. 
but also like you guys should evolve the content, right? It should mm. it should evolve with you. You may have lost you may have lost like your your control of of the channel and stuff like that. Like circumstances happened where like you couldn't keep making the content that you liked and like actually evolving as other people do with their content. But at least don't like go back to the the same stuff that you were doing back then too. Like don't mm -hmm. don't that's my, do stuff. That's my fear down. in this. They 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 might just try to really yeah, that's the, the easy ideas. thing to do. But I think they should just lean into what Anthony actually discovered regarding their brand that they can be of a serious brand other than just smosh and let's play and weird skits. They can actually cater to the mature audience. There's a lot of oh. the ones that actually started with YouTube back then were actually in the similar mindsets. Like they could just just watch any interview they've done with every OG YouTuber ever. Like mm. yeah. they have the similar thinking. <laughs> right. But yeah, uh Damn. all right. So yeah, I guess we can talk about two more assholes now, right? <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two, two incredibly rich, still living assholes. Still living. Still questioning if one of them is actually a real boy. Either of them. Yeah. What's, yeah. Let the people know what we're about to start talking about because I have a theory on this one. Okay. Our fourth topic for today. The Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg cage match pay-per-view has been confirmed. It would cost $100, bringing in over $1 billion, making it the biggest fight ever in the history of the world. Chris, who will you place your bets on? First, my money's on Zuckerberg for two reasons. One, he's kicking ass in like Taekwondo or something, Jiu-Jitsu or whatever he does. Him and like... He he, I, I think he won. Yeah, he won like a gold medal or some shit. So he's legit. First off, second, I think, <laughs> I think we all know Musk wants to get to Mars, right? And we all know Zuckerberg is likely from there. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I think, I think, I think Zuckerberg is here i think he started training you think he's fighting to save mars to stop the... i think he's fighting to stop the potential colonization of mars jesus christ i can't tell you if you're lean into the camera like it's a matter of fact <laughs> thing tell <laughs> i'm you telling you tell if you're being serious or not i mean if i don't know man it makes sense like who's going to colonize mars elon musk who is mars's potentially greatest warrior mark zuckerberg head to head cage match the god of mars what? versus the christopher columbus of 2020 whatever 30 right bro um my money's on musk i don't know man he's got satellites <laughs> he's got satellites you don't know what he's gonna do with them, those yeah. satellites <laughs> yeah my money's on the zuck old zucky yeah uh, my question is like, if it's actually you know televised, what happens to all that money? Yeah, you know, I think uh. we were talking about this earlier, right? Like, so if if it's like a hundred dollars a ticket, if it is a hundred dollars a ticket, what who like what happens to all that money? Does it go to a good cause? Does does the winner take it? Like Elon, because he's gonna win. I don't know, like. I'm genuinely curious. What's going to happen to that money? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Like, you know, I would I scoff at this, but we just had the Boogie and Wings of Redemption boxing match before. <laughs> what is this? Like, I remember the boxing match between Boogie and Wings of Redemption. What Two YouTube know. celebrities. Uh, oh, YouTubers? Yeah, yeah I know YouTubers yeah. and TikTokers have been doing it. But I mean, this is... Uh... What is a, what is the money for, by the way, regarding the price, the one billion? Was what, what is it going to be used for? The, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't are know. they gonna? 
are they going to pocket the money? That's it? I doubt it. That's the thing. No, I, I, doubt that. I highly doubt that. Unless, I mean, I don't know. Let's, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. Like, I'm in the of dark course. regarding this. Like, what even started this thing? Like, all of a sudden, who called who out? Wow. Oh, so, so uh, a, a Twitter conversation was like a Twitter reply, right? Someone replied, said, like, they should, Musk, Musk and Zuckerberg should fight. Essentially, like, that's kind of how it started, right? Someone, someone tweeted out, Musk and Elon should fight. And Elon replied to the tweet saying, if he's down, I'm down, essentially, like, like, let's yeah. do this, right? And Zuckerberg took a screenshot of that, posted it on his, on his Instagram story, I believe, saying, let's go, you know, let's, let's, where's, when, you know, what time, essentially. Right, right, right. Um, so that's kind of how this whole debacle happened, how it started. It's like, and now it's like, actually going to happen. I, I mean, it's it's gonna happen. I guess it's like what? Like, this is the world we live in now. We're two, two. What is it? The number one, the number one, number one, and number ten richest men on the planet are gonna fight. Are gonna box. It's great. I think uh, so. Like, Christian, I brought this up earlier. It's like they should box for uh, winner takes all. Essentially, like, yeah, I kind of like that idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, I mean, or at least. At least like Meta versus Tesla, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, I mean, put your money where your mouth is, bro. <laughs> pink slips, fighting for pink slips, fighting for pink slips. Yeah, <laughs> like that's crazy. Because I mean, I would have said Twitter, but Zuckerberg's probably like, I don't want that shit. Yeah, it's, I'll take like, <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, we'll trash that shit as soon as. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. Do I on a on a serious note? Do I think this will? This will materialize. Materialize? No. Really? I don't think so. Like an actual? You don't think a fight will actually happen? I don't think so. I hope it does. Me too. God, don't make history. Don't make history. Don't yeah, make history. I actually. would. I would. I would subscribe or whatever. I would definitely get in there and watch it. I mean, it's going to be sloppy. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I mean, Elon yeah. Musk. I don't know if he's trained i don't think i think he works like 38 hours a day on like 15 different companies i doubt he's trained in any type of self-defense yeah and zuckerberg looks uh, jacked zuckerberg ain't no joke what do you man mean? i he mean it's crazy. not like it's not like uh you know elon musk looks any no, better i mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> but, but i don't know if zuckerberg is quote-unquote jacked he's not is. jacked zuckerberg's Dude. winning tournaments like tom hardy yeah. He looks it like a actually... toothpick. <laughs> yeah, he looks yeah. like a toothpick in this, at least in this picture. But the thing <laughs> is, with jujitsu, <laughs> with jujitsu, but in terms of fitness, I think he's much better. Just blow on him, it'll fall. <laughs> fall <over>. But jujitsu, <laughs> jujitsu is all technique. Yeah, yeah, it has nothing yeah. to do with strength, and yeah, yeah. Absolutely, right, you're absolutely yeah. right. You're absolutely right. Yep. But they're right, not gonna do jujitsu, right? They're gonna box. That's like what they're. Oh, what the title's for, right? They're I they're getting like in the a, ring to box. They're not doing jujitsu. You know? I read cage match. It's a cage match. Yeah, you're I right. Think you're absolutely if right. If Dana cage White match. is getting involved in this, I think this is pretty much a done deal. So, what is it? The uh, so it would be so it would be jujitsu. It would be essentially. It wouldn't be would essentially it be MMA? like would it be... uh, what is it? yeah MMA. Thank you. That's it's an MMA one. one. Yeah. It, it, well, I mean, if it does materialize, it's going to be something like uh, Tyson Roy Jones. To be like a glorified sparring match. Or, I uh, what's the maybe not? It wasn't you know it's the um uh, Jake Paul or Logan, what was it Logan Paul versus Mayweather yeah. right? Similar to that. Mayweather. Yeah. Well, those are kind of legit. Yeah, they trained for it. Like I but pretty much think you don't think they're gonna train for this. But I mean, the problem when, there with the when will be the fight be happening? If it's a year from now. I think so, but who has the time to actually train for a fight while you're handling businesses that are having issues hey, right now? Uh, let me tell you something. I have a feeling like if this actually happens, like if this goes through, I don't mm -hmm. doubt Musk will put put some numbers up. He's gonna both definitely sure. like work. At, they're both will. They both. You don't yeah. think that they're both gonna train for this? Oh, absolutely. They're gonna both want to put on a show. What's they're the, gonna want to both put on a show for sure? What's 
can you search real quick, Christian, the the height and weight of each one of these dudes? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that matters. <laughs> I mean, Musk is probably like, I don't know, 200 pounds. Yeah, like <laughs> tail like, like melted a, ice cream. Like a tail of the tape type thing. <laughs> yeah, Musk is 6'1. Oh, Musk is kind of big. I didn't boy, I thought he was like 5'7, 250. Because he, he's he's kind of really doing like, this, right? Hell yeah, I'm curious. Zuckerberg is much smaller. He he's I think he's what five seven. Okay. Oh, he might get mauled. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Musk got oh. it, man. I am telling oh. you. No one wants to listen to me. I said this multiple times, dude. Musk is gonna win, dude. Musk will Musk win. Is that shit. My money's on Musk. My money's on Musk. We'll see. I feel like, we'll see. I feel like I feel like Musk's head is like the size of a. I'm fire betting on Bezos. Musk. He can take a hit. Bezos, Bezos, you yeah, believe I'm betting Bezos? on Bezos? <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Well, they should toss him in the ring. He's, he's like, like a, it's like WWE. He's like yeah. and a new challenger. Yeah. yeah. The pug was waving. They have to give <laughs> Bezos. They have to give. They have to give Bezos the Stone Cold music though. So as they're Musk and fucking Zuckerberg's going at you, just hear, <laughs> and then it's fucking Bezos. Imagine Bezos as awesome. a luchador, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to wonder what Bezos. Bezos probably sitting on his yacht right now, like no one hit me up. Yeah, <laughs> he's got to be like pissed a little bit. Like yeah, no one like, wants to fight right. me. What the hell? Yeah, or you know, he could be one of those. I got winner. <laughs> That'd, be That'd be fun. I feel like see. I feel like you know. That's why I love this kind of stuff because like it's so cheeky and on the nose and they know it. Like they know like yeah. It's not about it's not about the business. It's not about all the bullshit. It's not about you know, it's just a let's just fucking fight and like have fun, right? Like yeah. I love that type of shit, man. And I, I love, love that that for one Musk we already know is incredibly active on Twitter. So just the fact that he's seen this and was like, "All right, yeah, let's see." And then let's do it. And then Zuckerberg's yeah. like, "All right." You know, it's one of those I love that. I love that. It's like the pendulum has swung to where now nerds are having, you know, pissing contests. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just get Bill Gates, roll Bill Gates out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, he should be all, yeah, he should be good. You know, he's got, yeah, all those vaccines and shit. (laughs) Will Bill Gates even survive 10 seconds? (laughs) Bill Gates comes out oh, and he's man. got like fucking, you know what I'm saying? Some he's doing like the real steel type shit. He's got the robot in there. The fucking... <laughs> <laughs> he's just out there shadow boxing on the side. <laughs> He'll be the only contestant, actually. You know what? That's actually, think about out during it. the entrance. Thinking about it, with these guys and their money and their technology, I would much rather see each of them build a robot and go at it. Yeah, like same here. Steel. Yeah, like we or already even have like, even like battle bots. Like, we yeah, already have yeah, battle bots, bots, right? What's the what's the tabletop bots. one? What's the tabletop one? Rock and sock like, rock and sock em robots. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but look, but no, I'm down for it, man. I don't think it'll happen. I just really don't I hope it it's does, almost man. Too, it's almost too good to be true. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I hope mean, it it'll happens. definitely fuel it'll like you know, there's so much hate towards these billionaires, and I feel like it'll fuel a bit more like respect for them in a sense. Like, don't get me wrong, like I hate I hate billionaires as much as the next person, right? Like, whatever, like you know. But I feel like it'll fuel a little bit more like respect for these type because they're human, right? They're human. As yeah. much as like we like to, you know, rag on them, like they are human. Like yeah. and maybe not Musk, maybe not Zuckerberg, but yeah, because I think before billionaire Silicon Valley billionaires were actually fun. <laughs> Like Larry Ellison, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's go back to that. I think the only other celebrity boxing match I would want to see would be like Caitlyn Jenner versus Dylan Mulvaney. I don't know who. I know Caitlyn Jenner, but I don't know who. Dylan Mulvaney, the Bud Light Dylan guy. Mulvaney. The, 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 the lady. That single handedly oh, tanked Bud on Light. The, on the Bud Light, yeah. See, I don't, again, yeah. What, what did they do? Like, what? Nah, just, is, I just want to. Influencer kind of thing? 
I'm, Caitlyn Jenner. You know Caitlyn Jenner. Well, I know who Caitlyn. Yeah, I know who that yeah. is. I know that's, who that is. That's basically right versus left. Caitlyn Jenner is very conservative. Oh, oh, I see. I see. I you know see, what I mean? So see, there, there yeah, is the... some type of friction. Combat, there combative. Yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Dylan or, would um, Blair White. I think Blair White would kick the shit out of Dylan Mulvaney. The, I don't know who that is. <laughs> it's another conservative trans. She's a uh, like this is the thing, right? And we're I'm going to circle back to the the first topic kind of here before we close this out. I guess um, there are plenty of transgender hmm. people like Caitlyn Jenner on the right. and and Blair White on the right, and they live their truth and they're yeah. not cringe about it they're not in they're their not, face they're not she, making a mockery of womanhood you know and i think that's where the divide comes in with a lot of the other ones where it's just like accept me accept me accept me accept me accept like if anybody did that if somebody that you went to high school with did that to you every day accept me man i want to be your friend you'd be like bro get the fuck away from me you know what I, I mean? The, uh, kind of what's happening right now. It's the biggest issues today is like we're even even for me, even someone like me. Right. We're all stuck in our own echo chambers. Mm. We we uh, we tend not to leave those echo chambers. And that's that's a big issue. It's a big issue, especially with like young audiences these days. Like they have their set core groups. And they don't really like try to navigate out of that. You know, they don't right. try to step out of their bounds. Right. Um, because it's too scary, right? Like, yeah, they found comfort in the fact that they this is what they believe and like everyone else believes that, you know, and it's yeah. really good to kind of step out, like understand, maybe like read a bit more about like conservative values, maybe read more yeah. about like liberal values, like this type of stuff, like step out of your bounds, learn a bit about like the other side before you jump to conclusions. Yeah, that's the sure. biggest thing. So no one and the media, like, the media has had a, a big hand in form yeah. the perception of how people see conservatives like they think yeah. every conservative is racist and that's just insane yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah. one of my biggest gripes I, I really can't stand that or 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 anti allergy but whatever you know like yeah because like conservatively like we're like totally against like uh everything it's like no yeah it's, like, it's not true and i mean even for me and i'll just you know i don't i don't know if we've spoke about religion on here or whatever but i'm not an incredibly religious person i am conservative but i mean i even get annoyed by conservative voices that are like you know it's your you know this is you know they always dive divert back to religion for their reasons for what they believe and which is fine yeah but i have a hard time with uh those type things because i personally don't put a lot of Influ uh religion doesn't really influence me at all in yeah. my decisions you know i'm more on the science and energy kick than like you know deities and all that shit a lot so of even, stuff is just yeah. noise yeah a lot of it is just noise just to rile people up and you know mm. what i mean it's like sure a lot of christian values and conservatism but again it's like a lot of noise a lot of just like People yeah. just trying to bash and trying to make the other side look bad, even though they don't really understand the whole picture. Right, 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 right. But I mean, going back to like going back to like Musk and and Zuckerberg, like, uh, yeah. Before we shut it, are we going to talk about Father's Day or whatever? Did yeah, you move into that. Good. belated Happy Father's Day to everyone. Yeah, we we weren't on last time, but we did Happy remember you guys. Day. <laughs> yeah. Lady Father's Day. Yeah, well let's see. Uh yeah, I'll ask you guys a question uh so as a whether it be as a father or a son. Um <laughs> okay, so this is good. I have one father. Well, you're also a son, Christian, obviously. And Ryan is a son. He's he doesn't have, you know, as far as as far as we know. He could, I don't know. <laughs> uh but yeah, so Christian, uh, what would be if you had to choose one? Don't 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 say like oh I don't need it or I don't want it or I don't have. If there was one tech product, uh, price is no object, right? What would you have wanted for Father's Day? 
more than anything? What would be your ideal listing related right deal? now? Right now. Hmm. That's hmm. a tough question for me because I barely rely on technology. I don't, I don't even need the washing machine to wash my clothes. I usually I usually do it by hand. So hey, well, that's tech- what you're getting. You're getting a washing machine so you can experience <laughs> the, yeah, the the freedoms of throwing that shit in there and fucking forgetting about it for two days. Yeah. I, I get to keep my clothes for longer <laughs> if I do it by hand. But if there was one tech product that I would like existing right now, possibly a blender. <laughs> Damn, Saves a lot of time. I like Mar- you're talking about I like margaritas myself. and shit, smoothies. Yeah. Yep. Remember the South Park a... episode of Margaritaville? I good. Yeah, always yeah, dreamed yeah. of it. <laughs> I can just, I can, see, I can see you right now in the kitchen with that. What's that popular shit? Is going. Give me one margarita. I, you know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, in, in terms of you had a good question there, like in terms of being a dad, I think right now we discuss all of these tech products, but as a dad, you rarely get to think about it mm. being applied to yourself, right? right? Like, yeah, it's usually it's usually in the form of a request, in the form of a request from your kids, yeah, you I to, your spouse, yeah. but not necessarily for us. Like we right. have certain interests, like my interest is not necessarily tech related. If my interest is actually computers, I just get to build one once once in a mm. while, but not necessarily That's do it. That's what I thought your answer was going to be. Like, you already yeah, have a ton of computers. That's what I was right. expecting, yeah. yeah. I just build one machine and do my job with it, then move on. Like, my yeah. interest is what's behind me. It's you not know what's crazy? Too much. You know what's crazy? If you ask a fucking teenager, you could ask them if a blender is technology, and they'd probably say no. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, no, no, technology. Not traditionally, maybe not traditionally, but I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This for is sure, for sure, this, for sure. to the kids that are actually watching. This, this is coming from us. <laughs> you just came later. There is a world that actually existed before you guys. Mm, it's yeah. not, it wasn't that fun, yet yeah. we survived it. So take a coke and a smile. Have some no. fun now. They don't know, no, they don't know about a coke and a smile. Dial up. Dial up, uh, what is it? Two TVs. I used to have a two TV, it's like ancient now. Yeah, talking about ancient. My first TV was actually a Magnavox, it actually looks like furniture. (laughs) And we used to sit on the floor to actually watch it. Uh, Our TV was massive and it like weighed like 400 pounds, like not actually, but it it was like insanely. Our first TV was uh, our first TV was a Curtis Mathis. You ever heard Mm -hmm. of that brand, Curtis Mathis? Yeah, that's an old brand, bro. They had a Is store. It? Yeah, it they don't exist brand. anymore. I'm assuming. No, it's, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know it they have the windows when you open it in the middle. Yeah, yeah. This one. Has oh, that that's cool. Yeah. like they have in uh, like they have in hotels, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, in some hotels. But, all right, same same question to you, Ryan, but reversed. If you could get your dad, if I give my anything, dad anything, tech tech related, hmm. price no object. My dad is like the least tech literate person on the planet. Maybe not. No, yeah. I take that back. But he doesn't really. He's not a tech person per right. se. Um, I could get him anything. I mean, it's probably something to do with baseball. He loves baseball. Mm. I'm not exactly sure what that would look like. Hmm. What did I see? I seen some shit where, like, uh, you know, like a lot of people like go to baseball games. They like they listen. Oh and- yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And also about. watch the yeah. audio thing. Yeah. Um. Or something, or a golf product, right? I mean, my dad loves playing golf too. Um, viewfinder type thing, something like that. Some some yeah. sports. My dad loves sports. My dad loves right. sports and loves. Uh, like he, again, like it's funny. Like I would probably get him a tech thing, and he wouldn't know how to like do it. He wouldn't. Yeah. He was just like, oh, "What do I do with this?" <laughs> He'd be like, "You got me. Yeah, you got yeah. me something. Like, I have what to is this? It's like a chore. You bought me a, a tablet. Chore. I might get him a tablet. You know, yeah. I'd probably get him a tablet if I had like no holds barred. I don't know. Like, I mean, even if I got him a PC, he would never use it. You know, right, right, right. it's just yeah. funny. Like that's how he is. That's how he is. Dad's very old school in that sense. Like he doesn't like trusting technology like we do. 
Um, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, he does things on it. He still writes shit down. He he barely <laughs> like you know, it's funny, you know how like uh you can like react to stuff on text messages and stuff? Like he doesn't mm. do that. He doesn't know how to do that. <laughs> uh the long yeah, press just, <laughs> yes he doesn't he doesn't know how to do that he's not to do that um, it's like it's like one of my most repeated uh lines from modern family is when uh uh what's the dad's name ed ed o'neill what's his name on the show uh y'all watch modern family nope damn no, bro, that's, one, that's one of the best uh i know I can't funny remember. it is though my mom loves that show I can't remember his name on the show right now. It's, it's escaping me. But when they're trying to teach him how to double click, oh, and he's like, "Double click," <laughs> <laughs> like it's not working. It's like you're not. You got to double click, and he's like, "Double click." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my dad exactly. It's how how my dad would be. Yeah. Yeah. My first time like having a mouse, time. I had issues with it. Like you need to be at a certain speed to actually double click, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like every time I have any trouble with technology at all like if my cell phone is like i can't you know whatever i'm always thinking like double click and ask but <laughs> <Double click. laughs> i can't figure it out <laughs> now switching oh, places man. right now w- with us being sons w- is there any stories you guys have regarding the best way that your father's actually taught you a lesson hmm. <laughs> I yeah tell you, my uh, dad did he, he told not necessarily he told me a story um, yeah. see i had i had a lot of issues as it were when i was in college i was doing drugs and stuff like that i'll i'll be frank mm. and uh my dad sat me down one day and he told me about the time that he got pulled over with a ton of beer in his car and this was back in the day so he was in trouble we'll say that he was in big trouble i'll never forget him telling me that story about uh you know the how his dad like it was super pissed at him he he uh, was grounded for like damn near a month. He damn near went to jail. Like one of his friends was in, in jail for a bit. Um, that like struck a chord with me. Like it made me really like think about like my actions, like and who who I would be. Right. Do I want to be remembered by this asshole that did drugs and like could have gone to prison? Or do I want to be remembered by like this guy who actually like like went through hardship and like overcame it? So, mm. yeah, you know, it's something like that, like it stuck with me like that story of him like sitting in the car in the driver's seat 16 year old with beer in the back opened and stuff like i can imagine i can imagine like his heart beating you know like Mm. how about you chris (laughs) Um... (laughs) (laughs) well i mean my 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 biological dad uh no, not really. Like he uh he came around later in life. Um my stepdad he didn't teach me anything directly as like uh sitting down man to man type thing, but he taught me a lot through example. You know what I mean? Just watching. It wasn't like cuz he never really treated us like um you know, like I know these things and you should know these things too he was more of a you know watch me work type thing like he worked his ass off he was so Mm. so nice and caring to all of us and my mom and uh he really just taught me how a man is supposed to operate you know what i mean he was nice to everyone He, he he worked his ass off uh he demanded respect without demanding respect you know what i mean yeah and uh yeah but that's pretty much and my dad my biological dad was kind of like um i don't know you remember uh mortal kombat 2 for super nintendo yeah of course (laughs) yeah (laughs) you remember sometimes when you would when you would uppercut uh one of the creators they put the thing in there where the creator would pop out from the side of the the toasty yeah the toasty it's kind of like my dad yeah he would pop up every now and then (laughs) (laughs) it's like yeah in the corner screen of my life my dad's like toasty that was it really quick (laughs) like for special occasions right uppercuts special occasion graduation shit like that yeah there he is but like regular everyday fucking you know down down forward forward down down forward you ain't seen (laughs) i got a question um go ahead oh go ahead 
Yeah, I oh, think for I me, the memory for for my adopted dad is like if this was back. I think during my high school days, got so addicted. I don't know if you guys know the Tamiya Mini Four Wheel Drive kits that you race in small tracks. Yeah, I got yeah. so addicted to it that I actually stole money from my mom. I think it was fifty dollars. Yikes! And they found I, out. I had a story like that. Yeah. And my mom actually, she scolded me, by the way. <laughs> it was course, a brutal yeah. scolding. But she sent me to my da- dad. And my dad ever so called me, actually, pulled me aside, said we were going someplace. And I had no idea we were going to the racetrack. And he told me That's that awesome. buy anything you want from the shelf. So we, we spent the day there playing. That's awesome. And what he said to me actually stuck like anything in life you can ask for. You just need to ask. Whatever they might not give you, you need to work for. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's a good lesson. Never let go of that shit ever since. Yeah. Like honesty has been a big deal to me. I think it's interesting how how fathers don't really lash out like mothers do. Mm. Right? Fathers typically kind of sit you down and like, listen, son, like this is how the world works, right? Like, so, like right. right? Like it's not so much a you know, Wah, you know, like mom, you, you can see your mom yelling at you, right? Because that's how she gets her point across. Right. But your dad always knows, like, that's not how that's not how the son really gets yeah. it. That's not how it gets absorbed. It might be yeah. the, the bit of patience that I see in him actually resonated with me and how he handles things. Like, yeah. Yeah. We take patience a bit for granted. Sometimes you blow a lid when we we face issues. Sometimes just keeping calm, thinking yeah. about things just give you the solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, my stepdad gave me probably honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, the best advice he gave me. I don't even know if it's an advice or it's like a life hack. Um I was young, so I was like 17, maybe 18 years old, and I just my like my first serious girlfriend. And uh, she had come over, whatever. She was there at home and stuff. And uh, I, you know, I, he was outside. I came. I went outside, and I didn't. I didn't really. I don't know what caused it. Maybe it came from something that I had been doing in the house. But I remember saying to him that uh, I was like, <clears throat> I feel like there's a hair in my throat. <laughs> and he just he he laughed a little, patted me on the back, and said eat some cornbread <laughs> like, like that like that's the remedy for that problem <laughs> so funny yeah. and i was like oh damn i but i didn't even think of it like i wasn't like i think i you know did whatever and now there's it's just that's really what it was and i did when i when he told me and he laughed and he told me i was like oh he kind of thinks that maybe it's from you know whatever yeah but yeah that's and it worked for you guys out there. Cornbread will clear <laughs> Corn right bread. up. And you ladies, I mean, I'm sure, you know, cornbread will clear this shit right up. <laughs> banana also works. I think mine taught me banana, swallowing it. Mm. But yeah. I'm curious, uh, coming from two people who didn't really have a connection with their biological father, right? What does it mean to be a father now that you are, especially for the fact that you guys, you know, didn't have that much of a great connection or at all with your biological right. father. Like, like, you want to take this first, Chris? <laughs> well, I mean, it, to me, it shows, or what you know, it's um, first off, and it's something that that I did not. Like, does it vary if you have a son or daughter? Right? Like, what? Like, I don't know. Like, for me, it's it, kind of different. Not a it's kind of different. If you have a son or a daughter, the way yeah, you actually well, I, both. Yeah, I just have a daughter, but like the thing that that I struggled with as a kid was like blaming yourself. Right? Like he's not here because of something I did. I see. And it's yeah. obviously not yeah. what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if 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 I were, you know, if anyone were to ask their father, you know, why aren't why weren't you in my life or whatever, they will never say 
oh, because of you. Like, it's not your fault. But as yeah. a kid, we feel like it is, you know, like you, what else? You don't know anything about the world. You don't know anything about relationships. You don't know anything about chemistry. You don't know anything about your parents' history or, yep. you know, none. Of, so the only thing you know is you. And it's like, oh, it's my fault. But then, <laughs> so now, like, I'm not with the mother of my daughter, but my daughter knows why. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's not, not like you're not her father. Right. And she knows I'm I'm always here. I go as often as I can. I try to be there for important events. Um, if she needs anything out of the norm, you know, obviously, I, you know, tuition and allowance and all, all that stuff. But, you know, her mom's there to like cook and all the daily needs and stuff. But anything, you know, other like I need a new cell phone, like Christian was saying earlier, I get a lot of requests. Um, But, you know, for me, I think coming from that background, it was very important that I informed my daughter so that she doesn't think this because it's terrible to think that as a child yeah. you did something. So, yeah, that was one of the first once she kind of got old enough and had like her an independent thought, you know what I mean? Like to where it wasn't just, you know, she was older, 10, 12, maybe or whatever it was. Uh, and it was it was hard. And I talked to her and told her the real reason why her mother and I are not together. And it, it really kind of made her and my relationship much better because, like, I guess she knows, you know, like, you know, it's kind of a, an honesty moment where she was like, yep. all right, yeah. So I, I kind of, I, that I understand is what she said. So, yeah. No, full, full transparency. My parents aren't married. They never got married. Um, my father already had a family, like when he had me, my mom found out. <clears throat> so, and it, and I have a, like, I have, I talked to my sisters and I, like mm. that family, like they, they wanted to have a relationship with me. My father obviously still wanted to have a relationship with me. So that's one thing I can commend him on is the fact that he didn't, like, I wasn't just a throwaway essentially, right. <laughs> you know, like he, he actually did give a shit. He cared and he's, he's still in my life. So. That's something that I, you know, is very important, right? Like, um, right. and even if, you know, even if he wasn't, I'd still have a father. I feel like out there, like it right, would still matter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, just being adopted just never really actually mattered to me that much before, because I never actually felt that I was actually adopted. Because everyone actually around me treated me like that, like I wasn't. Mm. It was actually a big secret back then and who my mother was, which was actually the funny thing is my mother was actually just nearby. It was actually adopted by my grandmother and grandfather. And the oh. one that I grew up with, yeah. my sister, is actually my mother. So that was the deal before. Like mm -hmm. I I've, I've had an inkling before that that happened, that that was the case. My father is still alive. The bi biological one is in Canada, I think. Based from last I heard, if you're watching me, I'm here. But <laughs> <laughs> oh but I never actually tried to reach out because it's, it, it's although he's my biological father, I, I kind of think that he has his own life. Like mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't do us any good to, to to interact with each other at this point since I'm already an adult. Like I already have my own life. So yeah. as far as being a dad goes, I already have my blueprint. Blueprint. I just need to do and provide the love that is actually given to me, my kids. Right. So, absolutely, that that's just yeah. the thing. In terms of raising either a a son or a daughter, those are two different animals in itself. You have to switch personality immediately. <laughs> it's not about favoritism; it's about getting through to them. Yeah, because they have different mindsets. I, I think. Chris, being a guy, has to put on a much different tone when speaking to his daughter. And mm, the same thing when sure. it comes to me when speaking to my son. Right. Like, I, I can be much more uh, hard when it comes to my communication with my son, but I need to be a bit more softer when it comes to my daughter. Like, you have to make those adjustments. Sometimes when I have them both in front of me, that's the most confusing thing. I have to switch between them, the tones that I'm using. It makes it look like I actually am 
favoring one over the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that's my dilemma in terms of raising a kid for me. My blueprint is pretty much how I was raised, which mm. I, I I can't say that I was raised that bad, <laughs> based yeah. on people that actually met me. So yeah. Yeah. I'm never having kids. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They're yeah, a blessing think, and a curse, man. It's I think uh, each of us, each of us each guy actually said that at one point in their lives. Like I, I, I kind of remember I also did. Oh, I, I you know, obviously I'm joking. Like uh, you know, eventually I will have kids, but uh yeah, it's one of those roads. I mean, especially, you know, you brought it up, uh, Chris, I think, right? Like uh, with, with for me when i grew up i i blamed myself a lot for like my mom and dad being separated mm. and obviously i grew up and realized obviously it has nothing to do with me um mm. but for a long time having my father because my father didn't live with us right like my father right. was technically absent he was still around he he, he lived in north carolina and i lived in new jersey right so mm -hmm. it, it was difficult right it wasn't like he was around all the time um so i was i, I was very much concerned like especially in college and stuff like, am I going to be a good father since I didn't have a blueprint as Chris said it or Christian said it. Uh, but I, it, it's not about that, right? It's not about having a blueprint. It's not about like, it's, 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 you grow into the father that you become, right? Like it's not, it's mm. not something that you kind of just like, you, you know, you're not ready for it, right? It's not like something you get ready for or something, right? It's not yeah, something you for can sure. prepare for essentially. Like it's like, mm. it happens. Mm. You're a dad. Yeah, that's the thing. Now, For like, me, I actually you know. wish to be a dad. Yeah. Only thing is, when it's actually there, you kind of want to take it back. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't want sudden, this. <laughs> if you're actually set in, all of a sudden you have all these plans before it actually happens, then you kind of see the finer details and how, how you could achieve it. Your kid, yeah. what are the dangers of having one? You're going to base it on the environment, the society, and finance. Mm -hmm. You don't think of these things where you're actually wishing for one. You're thinking of these yep. things when you're in the, the delivery room. Yeah, life slashing before you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. I don't know. Yeah. It's good Father's Day talk, guys. Jeez. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Once again, shit. Yeah, salute to all the dads out there. Um, yeah. Keeping things yeah. together. Related. Raising a family. Sure. Father's Day. Yeah, and you know, also, you know, and I know this is probably cliche as all hell, but you know, there's a lot of mothers out there that play both roles. So, yep, my mom was yeah. very much, you know, acted almost like a father mm -hmm. to me too. Sometimes, yeah. so she had to. Yeah, uh, and I, you know, I'm very thankful for that. You know, yeah, beat that ass and then give you a hug when you're crying. Yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more but, more yeah. of the ass beating part. Happy hybrid <laughs> Potter's Day to everyone. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it goes right back to the first <laughs> first topic. <laughs> you know, some yeah, of these is. ladies have to also play the dad, man. It's kind of, you, yeah. you know, two roles. Yeah. Just like, uh, yeah, well, anyway. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any any comments or anything, man? Uh, just just drop yeah. it in the, downstairs and uh, yeah, man. we'll get to you guys on the next one. Sounds good, man. Yeah, thank you everyone are, for joining us in this this especially yeah. long episode. And I think <laughs> a bit of an emotional one. And again, we appreciate you guys for actually joining the three of us. Uh, we hope you kind of yeah. enjoy this long format. And uh, again, belated happy Father's Day to everyone. And all the mothers who are trying to keep it together. Uh, mm -hmm. We thank you for your hard work. Yep. All right. <laughs> See y'all next time. Bye.